It's Wednesday, January 5th, and the time for your Bobby this Today morning news update. Bishop Joseph Alderley has dismissed suggestions that his decision to run for the St. Michael Central constituency in the January 19 general election was intended to undermine the current representative. Bishop Adderley, who is the leader of the Alliance Party for Progress, on Monday revealed that he would not be seeking re-election for the St. Michael West seat, which he won in the 2018 poll on the Barbados Labour Party ticket. Instead, he would be vying for the St. Michael Central seat held by BLP representative Arthur Holder. He, however, made it clear that he had no vendetta against Holder. I'm not here having anything to do with Arthur Holder. I'm here... For the same reason I moved across the aisle in the parliament. I'm here for the same reasons I went to St. Michael West. I'm here in the interest of Barbadians. In this instance, specifically so, more immediately so, the people of Waterford, Dean's Village, and Bank Hall, and Station Hill, and Water Hall land. All over Bank Hall, big districts, all over Waterford, big districts, all over Bush Hall, big district, Station Hill and Dean's Village, all of these areas, Water Hall land. I'm here to represent their interests. It has nothing to do with anything against Alpha Holder. He's never done me anything of which I am aware. I hope he doesn't uh, change that situation during the course of, of this election. I don't like that kind of politics. Um, I'm here just to offer myself. People can judge me. I have been serving this constituency for 40 years now, through the church mainly, but in other ways as well. Grew up with people around here, played with them, and even while representing St. Michael West, I was representing the interests of people up here. You know, there are things you can say to get personal. I don't like to get down with that. That's not my style of politics. And Ms. Motley can accuse me of taking an unchristian step. If she knows what it is to be unchristian, well, then um, perhaps we should understand that. But I am not going to get into that type of, of politics. I came here out of a genuine interest. Once my stint at St. Michael West ended, when the parliament was dissolved a couple of weeks ago, then I was free to say to the people of St. Michael Central, who asked me, and these guys can tell you, come up here and run. And, and here I am. And I will give my best to them, win, lose, or draw. Meantime, residents of other St. Michael Central constituency have been giving their views on Bishop Arthur Lee's move. Here is what some had to say. At the good day, he's a, he's a man from this area. I, as a little young son, I ran born here in his house and you know, his family and everything. But. He's the man I respect, a good church and different kind of things. Yeah. You should take it course, man. He had always planned to, to finish with politics since uh, 2018. After uh, he won, I think he had said to his constituents that, you know, this would be my last. But since he started the party, you know, there's no sense uh, just uh, packing up the shelf and, but, you know, to see if something can happen. And so something did happen. And I think he has a good chance in, in, in winning. It's a mistake. Why is that? Because he will not get no vote from us. We are accustomed to um, Alpha Holder. And if we have to vote, we'll vote for him, not the opposition leader. No. To me, it doesn't matter. Everybody deserves a chance. If he wants to run, let him run too. Probably I'll even vote for him. Yeah. I have no problem because he can't tell you it's for the B. So uh, he ran the area. He was born in the area. Right, I had one thing. He's a family man. Right now, for me now, in this time, the man for this constituency will be Corey Cox for me. Why is that? Because um, I feel that we want to change right now in this constituency. That's how the way I feel. He young, you know, he intelligent, huh? he bright. Yeah, so we could give somebody else a chance right now. So I think Corey Cox is the man, the mayor man, right now for this constituency. One of the unions representing former Liat workers makes another impassioned plea for Barbados to summon an emergency meeting with other shareholder governments to conclude a severance pay package for terminated employees. Chairman of the Leeward Islands Airline Pilots Association, Patterson Thompson, said his union continues to wait for a response from the Barbados government to two letters requesting a meeting to discuss the plight of the workers who have been on the breadline for the past 21 months. Emmanuel Joseph tells us more. Thompson acknowledged that general elections slated for January the 19th in Barbados will now further delay any chances of talks being held to conclude a plan to pay the struggling ex liat employees their legal entitlements. But we are still struggling. The, the 
all the layout workers are 21 months into having no severance at all, no end in sight to the plight. And it's a very difficult time to live. We are struggling. We have no money to retool. We have no money to pay bills. There is no job on the horizon for us. So we are three times over worse than most people. Thompson said the offer of a compassionate payment of half of the severance made by the Antigua government and the advance of $2,000 per month by the Barbados government to its nationals have not gone far enough to satisfy the dire financial problems of the workers. The two in initiatives from the Barbados government and Antigua government do not deal with it conclusively. They do not hand deal with the situation long term. And we need help. Not only do we need help, we also would like to know what about the future of aviation in the Caribbean? What about, uh, they see other airlines operating within Barbados airspace now, within Barbados, home port in Barbados. That's fantastic. It's good for them. But what about the Barbadians and the other CARICOM nationals who lived in Barbados, who work for them? What about their future? Has there anything been discussed with other airlines to try and absorb the, some of us into that workforce? Can that happen? I understand they would have their people, but obviously everything is in negotiation. Hundreds of former Liat employees are owed about 80 million EC dollars, that's 30 million US dollars in severance payments. Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. An independent study will be commissioned to determine whether residents of St. Lucie who live near the Arawak cement plant are being negatively affected by its operations. The decision was taken by Prime Minister Mia Motley following a meeting on Monday between management of the cement plant and affected residents. Motley said the assessment was necessary as none had been conducted since 2007. Residents of Checker Hall and Maycox have been complaining for several years about the large amount of dust from the cement plant settling on their properties as well as noise pollution and other issues. The Prime Minister, who was accompanied by St. Lucie Representative Peter Phillips and General Secretary of the Barbados Workers' Union Tony Moore at the meeting, maintained that the findings of such a study were necessary. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mom, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated, and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To news from the region, a high number of healthcare workers have been reportedly exposed amid record COVID-19 cases in the Bahamas. The details of that report from Eyewitness News. Severe manpower challenges being experienced at healthcare facilities here in New Providence and Grand Bahama as what is believed to be the highly transmissible Omicron variant accounting for record-breaking case numbers in the past few days, leaving healthcare workers exposed. In New Providence, there's a little over 100 healthcare professionals out in New Providence and uh, there is about 30 uh, to my last count in uh, Grand Bahama Duran Memorial Hospital. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Michael Darvel revealing today that amidst a relentless fourth wave, the shortage of staff having a rippling effect at the Princess Margaret Hospital with some services having to be suspended. Some of our staff is out as a result of exposure to COVID, whether it's isolation or quarantine, but we are able to provide the essential services. At our legacy unit, uh, we have uh, admissions and we're opening up more of the tents, but I must admit that due to the exposure of some of our staff members, some of the essential services had to be cut back. And even though we have sufficient bed space, we are now restructuring to ensure that we find the staff 
where individuals who will be admitted will be able to go in those particular wards. To shore up the sector, Dr. Darvel says the health ministry is securing additional health care workers as a part of its COVID strategy. We outlined our plan. One of the plans was to bring additional doctors into the hospital system. That is being done as we speak. The other plan was to increase the amount of nurses in the system because of the exposure and the effectivity of the COVID-19. A lot of nurses can go in possible quarantine or isolation. And so we are now seeking to bring in an additional 50 nurses from abroad to assist us in our fight against COVID. And finally, Australia is battling a surge in COVID-19 cases due to the highly transmissible Omicron variant. More from Reuters TV. Australia's COVID-19 cases soared to a pandemic record on Tuesday. The Omicron variant has ripped through most of the country. Hospitalizations have risen drastically and a once formidable testing regime is buckling under lengthy wait times and stock shortages. Australia used a constant testing system for a year and a half, along with contact tracing and lockdowns to squash most outbreaks. But Tuesday's new infection numbers were up nearly a third from Monday's, which was also a record. Political leaders have pointed to a largely successful vaccination rollout and few deaths relative to new case numbers. But Prime Minister Scott Morrison's fiercest political competitor, opposition leader Anthony Albanese, says it's not good enough. So you can't get a booster shot, even if you have an appointment. You can't get access to a PCR test because testing sites are closing and the queues go for six or eight hours. You get told to get a rapid antigen test, but you can't find one. If you do find one, it's not affordable and they won't do anything about price gouging. That's the record of this government. Political leaders countrywide have been reshaping their messaging on COVID. After nearly two years of campaigning for widespread testing, authorities now ask asymptomatic people to bypass overburdened government-funded clinics and take their own rapid antigen tests. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.